Welcome to another edition of Over It with your host, Michael English. On today's show, we have dancer, choreographer, musician, Allison Clancy. She stops by the Broadway studios to talk about lost intersections and where we search for ourselves in the shadows. Hey, has anybody seen my keys? I'm your unsung miracle host, Michael English. On today's show, Allison Clancy. Let me tell you a little bit about Allison. She's a multivalent artist. Multivalent, put that one up. Her work is centralized around the pursuit of beauty and catharsis. She tours internationally as the company member of Zvi Dance and is in her 10th season at the Metropolitan Opera. Allison has written and recorded and performed music under monikers such as Psycho Tycho, Loving You, Huff This, and Electric Child. Currently, she's just releasing work under her own name, Allison Clancy. Welcome to the program. I can't believe I got you all this. Thank you, Michael. As usual, I have no questions and no place to start, uh, but I'm going to start at the beginning. Tell us about your background. And tell us your story, if you will. Where'd you come from? Well, I came from the woods, and now I'm from the city. Uh, your passion for music and your passion for dance. Um, when did you realize? Was it at the same time? Which was first? I think I've always felt really connected to both of them. Obviously, there's been different times when different skills were evolved or developed, but um, my connection has always been really natural to these art forms. They're both very primal. Wow, tribal or primal? I mean, both. Both? Okay. I was never quite a member of a tribe, okay. personally, but... In the woods? No, not in the woods. I was mostly alone in the woods. But, um, tribe of fairies, maybe. Tribe of fairies, <laughs> I like that. Well, your skill set is multi-pronged. Um, we mentioned a little bit in the beginning, dance, music, you bring video to the party. Uh, rumor has it you wake up with an electric guitar in your hands. Um, talk about that, your, your ability to marry music, dance, the staging. Now I know, I know direction is in your wheelhouse, I know lighting is in your wheelhouse. You, you do it all, right? For yourself and for your, for your bands, right? Yeah, so much of it is just about figuring out what you like and that takes a lot of experimentation. Also, whenever I have the opportunity to collaborate with masters of other art forms or people who have other skills. I'm always trying to really observe as closely as I can and see what they're doing and if it's appropriate, ask as many questions as I can. So you ask questions? I ask questions and also I'm very, uh, you know, everything I create, there's a lot of drafts, you know, I'll do something and I'll do it again and I'll do it again until I sculpt it into an aesthetic that feels right. I'm okay with something taking time to evolve as it, as it wants to be. There can be something really magical about a first instinct, and then there can also be something about a, a depth of a depth of knowledge or a depth of understanding. Um, I enjoy repetition in my craft. Um, I think dance training really teaches you to appreciate that. In ballet, you're doing the same things over and over and over, and you learn to really appreciate and tune in to the subtleties of what you're doing. Which live dance performance that you've seen in person that's given you passion or, or, or direction to, to maybe do something you've never done before? Like, is there an inspirational troupe or... Um, as a child, I remember being very inspired by the work of American choreographers Martha Graham and Donald McHale. In recent years, I've been really drawn to a lot of the work coming out of Europe. There is a company called Peeping Tom that I think is just doing really interesting work. What's the biggest thing you might have learned? I think the overall thing that I've learned that has encompassed all of the art making that I've done is to really make peace with uncertainty. An artist's life is sometimes precarious 
it can feel a bit like a free fall. Uh, but I try to just relax and enjoy the chaos of it and enjoy the unknowing. Just to um, ask an innocuous question, do you have a favorite book and why? Hmm. I have a lot of favorites, but I'm going to keep that secret. Describe your childhood in a word or a sentence. Feral. I, I was a bit of an untamed animal growing up in the mountains. Okay. Yeah. Just above the woods. Were you above <laughs> the tree line? Uh, Did you ever go above the tree line? Yeah. Mm, That's um, high up. My mom was a bit of a storm chaser. Okay. So if there was a blizzard, rather than driving away from it, we were usually driving straight into it. Fun. Yeah. She's any any uh, close calls you want to share with us? Well, I mean, she's a snowboarder, and so if it was a whiteout blizzard, she'd be really excited because then she could get my little brother and I to go off like the double black diamonds because we couldn't see how steep it was. <laughs> so uh, she was a bit of a trickster like that, but we always were fine. No regrets though? You, you know your way around a mountain? As an artist, do you have a routine? Do you have a particular routine? Uh, um, I take ballet pretty much every day and that's usually about a two hour class. So that's a ritual. Five days a week? Yeah. Wow. Incredible shape. It's, um, it's really a meditation for me at this point. It, it's my way of connecting to my body and also a way of connecting to space and time. You know, you just sort of, so much of what you're working on in ballet is alignment and you can think about that in a self-referential way but you can also think about that in being aligned with space and and your community and what a great routine i picture this very disciplined toned individual who doesn't abuse her body with food or guilty pleasures but do you have one do you like do you have Late night snack. You ever eat it? Oh yeah. I mean, I definitely enjoy all the pleasures of life, but I don't usually feel guilty about it. Okay. Uh, for me, guilt is not pleasurable. So. Okay. If I'm gonna enjoy something, I try to just really enjoy it. I have no guilt about all my pleasures. That's the problem. <laughs> I think that's great. I really um, can work on it though. Not guilt, but just. Not too many pleasures. There's never too much pleasure in my mind. I think learning to also really enjoy the pleasure of effort, you know, to not see it as something separate. I like that. Favorite place in the world to relax and kick back? Money's no object. If you could go somewhere, or is it right in your own backyard? Where do you like to mm. write your next? My favorite place piece. to relax is definitely in bed with um, Shan Marshall II who is a cat, uh, laying on my chest, sleeping. I'd say that's my favorite. What color is Shan Marshall the second? She's Siamese, but she might have a little bit of ragdoll. She's a bit fluffy as well. Would you call yourself an accumulator, a compiler, collector? Do you collect things or, or do you collect memories? What do you collect? I'm a minimalist. I don't really like a lot of stuff. I would say the exception being guitar pedals and music gear. Um, gear porn. I'm always excited to play with new toys. And, uh -huh. uh, if I have amps in multiple locations, then I don't have to carry amps around as much. Oh, how nice. Keep an amp in my car, keep an amp in my apartment. Very nice. Amp in the studio. Have you ever found anything in the street, say, uh, end table and took it home and said, and that's one of my treasures. I just love that thing. Oh. oh my goodness, just three days ago, I found an amp on the street, Speaking a little tiny mini amp and a little dusty, but took it home, plugged it in, works perfect. Were you ever given some advice, either professional or personal advice, and um, you took it and you're like, man, that was some good advice. 
There's been so much from so many wonderful people, but something I think about a lot is my mom said to me, you know, most people are so self-obsessed that they're not really paying that much attention to you or anyone else. So you may as well just do what you want. And that was very liberating. Everyone's just trying to live their life and just enjoy yours. You know, sort of what I took away from it. Wow. Well, speaking of enjoying life, I enjoy a little ice cream every now and then. That's one of my guilty <laughs> pleasures. Ask anybody that knows me. And Baskin Robbins often calls this show. As a matter of fact, they called recently knowing you were going to be on and they wanted to create a 30 second ice cream flavor. Using your name, what would it taste like and what's in it? That's a fun question. Definitely, it would be something contradictory, like have sweet and salty, or spicy and creamy. People talk to themselves sometimes in New York, and this is before the earbuds, I'm really saying, because now everyone's talking to themselves, but every now and then you would see somebody just having these full-on conversations. What's your, is your reaction a little bit like that? You chuckle a little? Do you get involved? Do you just keep walking? I think I just enjoy it. like. It's part of the wonder of New York City is just all the amazing people and how strange and beautiful they all are. Who knows, it might be the next great poetry or, or songwriter you're hearing. Yeah. Who knows? Do you ever see someone cry in public here in New York? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Alone? Like, full yeah. on sob? Yeah. Do you, do you, uh, what do you do then? Depends, right? I usually try to give them their space, you know. Okay. I want to talk about Allison present and Allison future. Right now I'm dancing in Eugene Megan at Metropolitan Opera. And I just signed with a record label and released my first EP with them called Mutant Gifts. Mutant Gifts, I had a pleasure of checking that out. Um, if you don't mind, I'd like to roll a little clip for the audience. Do you mind? Shot in the village at St. John's in glorious black and white. Who's your accompaniment? Uh, Brent Arnold, an amazing cellist. Yeah. And that's a composition all your own. I wrote all the guitar and vocals, and he wrote his own cello of course. parts. Yeah. But under your tutelage, right? It's your piece, isn't it? I don't tell him what notes to play, but I do say like more like, I give direction, it's more about structure, like louder here, softer here. Your Vimeo page is chocked full of louder here, softer there. Mm -hmm. The other piece um, at the Met was, it looked like a multi-camera shoot. I don't know how you pulled that off. Did mm -hmm. you pull some strings to get camera people in there or did they just do that out of the grace of their good graces? I was very fortunate to have a friend be able to come shoot from the wings, which um, I'd never seen happen before in all my time there, so got some really special footage. They like you there. I hope so. I, I like them there. <laughs> Ten years, I mean, right? I mean, sometimes you see people come and go, and then they come back, and they, they remember you. Mm -hmm. it, you might have inspired, right? I hope, I hope to, I hope I could inspire someone. There have been dancers that have come before me that I've been really inspired by. Um, it's amazing that the Met is a place where dancers can have a really long career. I, I, I just feel so grateful to be there every day. The music, 
the singers, the sets. Um, it is one of the jewels in the New York necklace, the diamond like, necklace. It's just totally surreal and magical. Every day there, you don't know what you're going to see or hear or experience. And you might go to get on the elevator and there's like a donkey. Or you might walk into the cafeteria and just be surrounded by pirates. And <laughs> so we're talking a little bit about the present. I'm trying to be more present. That's my big goal in 2022, to be more self-aware. Is there anything you're going to release online that, that people should know about with this new music? Can we look forward to? Yeah, there's a lot of work actually in the pipeline that will be coming out. I would say one thing that I'm really excited about is some collaborations with a really legendary Bruckup dancer named Ghost. Bruckup uh, means broken form. This dancer goes by the Ghost of New York. His movement is so poetic and has so much texture, and I'm just really excited to share what we've made together. How can we check it out? Um, well, ghosts. Uh, yeah, how can we see? He, like has, he has a lot of work online already. Mm -hmm. uh, if you just look up the Ghost of New York, you can find him, and I'll be releasing a lot of work we made together. That's great. So yeah. you, you do the composition and he does the movement? I did the music uh -huh. and sort of uh, created a scenic world in collaboration with Tustu Collective. And then the movement is very much his movement. What I've seen you do on some of your performances is you take analog gear and use it in feedback or you use it in presentation. Tell, tell us a little bit about how you do that. Both analog and digital are both really powerful tools. Um, I would say one example of more analog technology that I love is simply a light and a shadow. Um, using the power of a shadow for movement is similar to using amplification for a voice. You can really project the energy of the mover into space simply by creating the shadow that amplifies their movement into a bigger environment. Um, and there's something very immediate about the fact that it's not being processed digitally. It's just very, very simple technology, but when used thoughtfully, I think can be quite powerful. When I'm first writing a song, I usually do it um, just using an analog looping pedal. Somewhere on the interweb, you've got a nickname of, or a moniker of, if Iggy Pop wore ballet shoes. Do yeah. you find that accurate? Uh, especially when I, uh, in this particular project, Electric Child, my performing persona was very wild. Okay. Something, some sort of mix between like a rabid animal and a showgirl. It was a very, really? it was a very manic persona. Um, but with some big movement. With a lot of big movement. I would, I mean, I got banned from a few venues for just being too crazy, jumping off their pianos. And Is there documentation of this somewhere? Electric child? A little bit. Moshing? A little bit. Uh, if, you, if you do a deep dive, you might be able to find something. Wow. <laughs> I'm your deep dive host, Michael English, and this has been a very intriguing over with Allison Clancy. Allison, thank you again for joining us. Thank you, Michael. I want to see you on stage next, okay? Concert. Hold me to that. Remember, folks, stay positive and test negative. Όλα ακούγονται μαύρα και άρακνα.